welcome everybody to the um, the live chat this week. So as you know, we're running um, live chats every day, and what we really wanted to do was make sure that you, the students who are interested in apprenticeships, um, have something uh, for you guys specifically because. We don't want you to think that it's all about uni because it isn't. Uni isn't for everybody. Um, lots of our students are interested in apprenticeships. A number of our students successfully get apprenticeships every year with, with Rob and his team's support, um, including some degree in higher level apprenticeships. So we wanted to make sure there was an opportunity for you to ask your questions about apprenticeships um, and just to make sure you understand that we're not just all about uni, what we're all about are a range of options. Um, that, that you guys want, might want to consider. Um, so just so you're aware as, as well, on the FutureWise presentation that we sent out and that's available on WQE online, there's much more further information about apprenticeships. There's lots of websites you can have a look at. And if you want to talk to us individually about your own circumstances, please feel free to email on uh, careers at wqe.ac.uk. Um, so the way it will work today is Rob's just going to give a, a brief overview of, of his work and the, the, the field of apprenticeships. Um, and then we're going to open up to questions. So this whole thing relies on you guys submitting questions uh, for Rob to answer. So the way you do that is through the Q&A button, um, which is on your screen. So you can start submitting those questions whenever you want to, um, and we'll, we'll answer them as we go through. OK, so uh, no question is, is, is a silly one or a small one, so feel free to ask away. And Rob, is it OK just to give a, a bit of an overview of apprenticeships? Yeah, that's fine. So um, I work for um, an organisation called Leicester Employment Hub. So it's part of Leicester City Council. Our uh, role within the council is really helping people into work. One of the work options that we're sort of predominantly looking at is apprenticeships. Um, so what we're impartial, so we do have contacts with different training providers and employers, but with us, you'll get impartial information, advice and guidance, um, around apprenticeships and careers. So yeah, the way apprenticeships work for those not aware, you have your employer, like any other job that you're working for who pay you wages. You also have a training provider, um, that's there to deliver the qualification part of the apprenticeship. So typically that's an NVQ, um, but there are different levels um, starting at level two and going right through to master's degree level now. Um, there are definitely more um, apprenticeships available at the lower levels, but there are the higher levels are increasing. Um, so yeah, alongside your regular work, you'd be trained by that training provider um, to gain your qualification. So the main um, qualification wise entry criteria for apprenticeships, they're typically looking for good levels of English and maths. So if you've got uh, fours or definitely fives and above in English and maths, you pretty much have your pick of apprenticeships. Um, other than qualifications, they're looking for individuals that are keen and demonstrating a passion to work in a certain industry. Um, so it's not like college where you can apply or sorry, rather uni or college where if you get the grade you're in, you're going to have to go to a job interview. You're going to have to sell yourself at that interview and convince that employer that you're um, the right person for that job. So it's about selling yourself, about doing your research, about perhaps having voluntary um, experience in an area just to demonstrate that you have a real passion for that area. Um, I'll talk a bit about as well currently the situation with apprenticeships because yeah. of COVID is not great. There, there's a lot less available than there would be. We don't know when that's going to pick up. Um, but what we are doing now, which um, I can give you more details about after, is a, an apprenticeship interview service for phone interviews and with that we're we're essentially in contact with most of the local training providers so the way recruitment works for apprenticeships is the training provider that's always that first point of recruitment so they're the ones that shortlist candidates for employers so um what we can do is put you straight in touch with those training providers let them know what you're interested in and then um yeah help you on that journey really so what 
we're finding now is, like I say, there's not necessarily a, a massive amount of vacancies available. But if we put you through to those providers, what they'll do is get in touch with you. If they have suitable live vacancies, they will put you through, if you're a suitable candidate, they'll put you through for telephone interviews or video interviews with those employers. If they don't have suitable vacancies at the moment, they will, um, they are making sort of pools of candidates ready for when jobs are available. Um, they'll also be able to tell you all the things you can be doing in the short term to increase your chances again once jobs are available. And I think one of the things that we'll find um, is that once jobs do become available, so if an employer contacts a training provider tomorrow and says, we want a digital marketing apprentice, if they've already got a pool of candidates that are, they know are good and in interested in digital marketing they'll be sending those candidates straight out to those employers yeah. or arranging interviews so it's it puts you in a stronger position because i think a lot of the time we're going to perhaps see um employers not even advertising these posts because they've already built up a, a pool of candidates yeah well, that's true to save themselves the recruitment kind of costs and, and the time as well i suppose Yep, yeah. definitely. Okay, thanks, Rob. That's really useful. So we've had um, a first question come in with the students asking about degree apprenticeships and how competitive they are. Um, they're very competitive, I would say, at the moment because there aren't that many of them. It's still a relatively new thing. Um, it depends um, what you're looking for, I suppose. Some of them. So you've got things like. Um, solicitor degree apprenticeships really hard to come by and a lot of competition for those um, locally we've got de Montfort uni that offer chartered management um, degrees i think they they've got more options there they're working with bigger companies so they're working with people like mattioli woods they're working with kfc um, and these are all managed yeah chartered management positions but yeah it, it does depend what you're looking for so but i'd be happy to like with any of these questions happy to go into more detail later if you want to contact me after if okay. there's a specific subject that you're looking for yeah so that's great thanks rob that's a fantastic offer actually if so if, if anybody feels that um they want a bit more specific or a bit more detailed advice that's just tailored for you um we we can we'll, we'll put you in touch put them in touch with you rob would that be okay to do that yeah that's fine yeah, yeah pass on my details yeah yeah okay so if that if you're in that position please let me know and i'll and i'll let you have um, rob's contact details you can drop in. Um, so um yeah i think we'll probably talk a bit more about degree apprenticeships later because i know it's something our students are really quite interested in um a student's asking as well if she if she got an apprenticeship would she have to leave her current job they're all um full-time jobs apprenticeships so the hours are um, between 30 and 40 hours a week so minimum 30 most of them that we see are more like 37 to 40 hours a week so it would just depend on what your job is if your job is a part-time job at the weekend no you don't have to leave your job you can you can do that um, but if it's yeah more hours in the week the chances are you you wouldn't be able to do both okay well thank you um, I've had a query in um, about um, whether there's what kind of apprenticeships there might be in two particular sectors. Um, the students interested in media and also in science. So yeah, I'll... both areas where there aren't necessarily a, a great amount of apprenticeships, unfortunately. One one thing I would really recommend across the board for anyone is looking at the Start Career site. I'm not sure if you're aware of that one, but again, if you look for jobs on that, it's free to register um there's a link to it on our website i'm sure kate's probably aware of it as well um but you can look on there at any career and it will tell you the routes into that um one of the things it does in those routes is tell you if there is an apprenticeship route and if there's an apprenticeship route it links you to any live vacancies um there but i, I know there aren't many in the science um and media areas yeah, we've seen them. There was one, wasn't there, this year? I'm sure you saw it as well at the hospital, which was a biomedical science um, opportunity at the LRI. But there's just there's just one, and it, it kind of I think it 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 went fairly quickly. So um, I think you're right. It's not they're not 
areas where there's huge amounts of opportunity are there is it no it, it again maybe not as useful for you guys but these the things will pick up it's early days for a lot of these higher um apprenticeships and a lot of the different types of apprenticeship as well and they do run don't they i'm just thinking about say people like the bbc and sky and itv will all run kind of um school leaver programs that that are accessible you know that students can apply for when and of course they're very competitive but those opportunities exist and yeah most nice. larger companies now are offering pretty large scale schemes um but they do tend to be more in the areas of um engineering um more sort of office based roles i would say um and yeah m media and science is just something yeah areas that there aren't necessarily too many opportunities yeah i suppose those larger company schemes they might not necessarily call them apprenticeships might they might call them school leaver programs or yeah they tend to have both yeah apprenticeship options school leaver options yeah yeah so um what sectors would you say you have mentioned a couple of them but what other other sectors where there right where there is lots of opportunity in terms of apprenticeships there tend to be loads in um, things like fi finance, engineering, um, admin, things like customer service. We're seeing more um, in schools now. So mm -hmm. classroom assistants, um, we see quite a few PE teaching opportunities. Um, and yeah, I'd say they're the, they're the main areas though. Um, and, and that's not to say you won't find others. Again, within the NHS, we're seeing more and more um, options so in that sector. And I expect to see more in healthcare and logistics as well over the next few months, because that's what um, we know where a lot of the jobs are now. Yeah. Yeah, I think when I think of the, every year, we have a handful of students that get the, the those kind of really sought after degree and higher opportunities. And they I'm thinking of who of those students, and they have been in things like finance, engineering, like you said, um, maybe retail, pro uh, um, property, you know, construction type things. Yeah, we still see. Um, yeah, we still see quite a few in construction. Again, in the Midlands, it tends to be harder still, you know, to find those. There are a lot of opportunities in construction. There's just a huge amount of demand for it as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had a student come back um, recent, well, just before the lockdown, actually, who had managed to get a degree apprenticeship at Morrison's um, and she was loving it. And, you know, she 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 said she'd never really thought of Morrison's as somewhere that she would ever work, but they were just really giving us some great opportunities. So, um, yeah, I think a lot of those larger companies, that's what I would look for. I mean, if I yeah. were doing something like this, they have so many different roles available and within those companies um people think of it as you know it's a shop so it's going to be retail but they've got legal departments they've got it departments you know um they're doing digital marketing that you know that they've got the finance department so there's a lot of roles and similar with the nhs as well people think oh, i'm not really interested in that healthcare side of it but there's so much more to the jobs there. They've got roles in all kinds of um, areas. Yeah. And a lot of support for those people as well. And that, that's probably the key. Um, it's the support that you'll get throughout the apprenticeship and also the opportunities once you've completed your apprenticeship. Because you can then apply for internal roles. All these bigger companies, they are not training apprentices to lose them at the end of that apprenticeship. They want to keep those individuals, and you'll find there are a ton of different roles um, in those and op opportunities in those companies. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, a student's asked about what apprenticeship providers would look for more when, when it, we're in a candidate, so whether they would look more on past experience or grades. Or right. a mixture of both. So grades, the only things they'd really look for um, are English and maths. They're not the, and the reason they're interested in those is because you can't actually complete your apprenticeship um, unless you're at a certain standard of English and maths. So the lowest level of apprenticeship is level two. In order to complete that, you have to have at least passed or have the equivalent of a GCSE pass in English and maths. Once you're up to level three apprenticeships, you have to have passed, um, have a good, you know, a higher grade English and maths. Um, 
GCC grade. So, but beyond that, yeah, it is. It's just demonstrating that passion, experience will help you, because let's say if you were interested in a motor vehicle apprenticeship with Volkswagen Group, something like that, a lot of opportunities there. Um, it's it's thinking about your. You've got to demonstrate your interest in that tell them that you or show them that you can meet the English and maths, but also you're in competition with everyone else looking for that role. So if you've volunteered at a garage or you've, I don't know, got a family member and you've worked with them on a car or you've shown an interest that is going to put you ahead of all those people that perhaps have the same grades as you. Um, that just gives you the extra um, something that will um, convince them that you're the right person. Yeah, when you're talking about the, comp the competitive nature of some of these opportunities, that kind of stuff can be really great, can't it, to help to help students sort of make a competitive application, I suppose. De definitely. Yeah. Anything that's going to demonstrate that you're genuinely interested in it. Anyone can say, yeah, I love, you know, HR or I love digital marketing. If you can say, yeah, I love digital marketing and here's this stuff I do in my free time, I've got this mm. YouTube channel or I've got, you know, my Twitter and Facebook feeds and I'm advertising, you know, whatever it is, it's a lot better, you know, to be able to show that you, you know, prove that interest, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've had a couple of, um, of questions about when to apply. Yep. Um, so a student's asked about when and how do we start applying for apprenticeships? Um, is it after leaving college or during college? That does depend on uh, where you're at. And then another student asking more specifically about when you apply for degree apprenticeships. Um, so they typically, um, they tend to start advertising in the, um, I'd say early in the year for September start. So if you're looking, at, if you're finishing college September, uh, sorry, June, July 21, the next year, you'd want to start looking January uh, 21, definitely. You'll see the degree ones coming up then. They tend to go um, advertise their opportunities early. Part of the reason is a lot of them, um, they don't, they'll, they'll do their own assessments for English and maths. So they'll assess you anyway, and then um, they won't necessarily have to wait for you to get your results back. Um, they'll, yeah, they'll make you an offer based on the assessments that you take. Um, but yeah, typically I would say engineering, especially probably February to April, they're recruiting and it's all done by then. We've done recruitment with um, motor vehicle stuff, so Volkswagen Group, they tend to have it all done by early May. Um, because again, they're doing those assessments before, so they'll know if you're the right um, fit for them. Yeah. Uh, even before you've done your exams. Yeah, okay, that's great. Um, just before we carry on, just a quick um, uh, sort of shout out to you guys. Don't forget, if you have any questions to ask, um, please submit them using the Q&A button. Once we've run out of questions, and once I've run out of questions for Rob, which will happen at some point, um, we'll, we'll, we'll stop. So um, if you have any questions, don't miss out on getting them answered. Um, please send them through uh, and, and, and we'll get to them. Um, just to follow on, on from the, the two questions the students have just asked about when you apply, um, could you tell us a bit more about about the application process and how they actually would, would go about applying and, and so, again, like for all levels generally, but also for the degree and higher ones? Okay, well. so all the apprenticeships um, are, are advertised on the Find an Apprenticeship site so it's a government site if you just google find an apprenticeship it's the first thing that will come up so um you have to register on that to get an account it's free to register you then upload your information um and you can then search on that you can search by postcode you can search by um apprenticeship area uh, type you know job sector and then it will bring up any live vacancies. You can also set up alerts. So if you search for something like teaching assistant and there aren't any vacancies at present, it will um, send you an alert as soon as there are vacancies. Um, again, with those, they, the applications go, typically go to the training providers. So for every application, when you see, when every job, apprenticeship rather, when you look at the website, if you scroll down on that particular apprenticeship, you'll see who the training provider is. 
um, they'll typically have a contact for that training provider as well. Um, so that's when, when you, if you register with our service, we can put you straight in touch with those people and make sure they're seeing you. Um, which one of the issues we have with applications is people do an application online on that form and then they just don't hear anything if they're unsuccessful. So they don't get feedback, um, which is not great, but it's something we are trying to deal with hence if you registered with us we can get you in touch we'll guarantee we'll get you some feedback you know we'll um, help with those applications so again training providers tend to be really busy with applicants um, for whatever reason we know a lot of them when they get an application that's not great they just bin it they then don't get back to people which is not good but that's something we're trying to um, help with Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, a student's asking about how available um, the solicitor apprenticeships are in Leicester. I think also might have to think of, you know, or, or, or close to Leicester, so like Birmingham, Nottingham, you know, what are the chances of getting one kind of yeah, not it, far away? At the moment, there are hardly any advertised. Most of them are looking for school leavers. So again, it depends when you're looking. If you're looking for 2021, keep your eye out from, you know, even dis November, December time, keep your eye out on that site. See what comes up. Sometimes companies do advertise even before before Christmas for recruiting um, for September starts the following year. So, but you don't see that many, to be honest. I have seen them um, in Leicester, um, perhaps a couple a year, but, um, and you will see them across the country, more of them, but um, yeah, locally it's hard at the moment, definitely. But I would say keep, keep an eye out on that. And again, contact us if that's something you're interested in. Contact me after we can have more of a chat about um, options there. Yeah, okay, thanks Rob. Um, would you say it's worth students um, say approaching employers directly to ask them if they have any opportunities? Is that something that would be worth doing, like a speculative? Yeah, uh, I think I fact? think it is. It demonstrates an interest, a genuine interest in, you know, wanting to do that. And um, yeah, we definitely get people, I've seen it particularly with construction firms where people have just gone to them and said, want an apprenticeship. And again, we've got contacts with local uh, construction firms. So if you're interested in that, um, send us your CV. We'll send it round to those firms if if you're looking for an apprenticeship. Um, but yeah, it, anything that demonstrates um, a proactive sort of approach to it is good. Same with training providers. That's why I mentioned on the applications, look for who the training provider is. They've nearly always got a contact on there. If you phone that person from the training provider and say, look, I filled in this application form, but I'm really keen on getting an apprenticeship in this area. It looks really good. That that mm -hmm. provider then knows that you're proactive, knows that you're really actually interested in that. A lot of people do fill in applications for things they're not particularly interested in. Hence, mm -hmm. you know, some of the applications aren't that great and they get ignored. But if I would say, yeah, contact, I always recommend to people, contact those training providers. They may well, like I've explained with the COVID situation, where they're not even necessarily advertising positions, they may well have other positions that come up. And if they know they've got, you know, know of a good candidate and an employer comes to them asking them, have you got anyone? They may just send you straight through for an interview with that employer without even advertising that position. I know it happens. So, it, you know, it's definitely worth those contacts. And I guess the thing, would, you, would it be the case that most people wouldn't actually do that? So if you do do that, that's going to immediately make you stand out. Most people wouldn't yes. contact the training provider or contact the... the Definitely. Company. Yeah, most people won't. There's nothing, no one telling you to do that. So you've kind of got to work it out for yourself. And um, yeah, it's it will definitely put you at an advantage. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Had another good, really good question come through actually from um, from a student asking about whether to do a degree apprenticeship. You have to work your way up from a lower level or you can apply straight for a degree um uh, level opportunity and I, I know we've had some students that have applied straight to to degree and, and managed to get them so that is possible isn't it yeah again it depends on the apprenticeship so some of them work all the way through um some of them you can just come in at that perhaps um starting off roughly level four so above a levels um some of them are coming in yeah starting at the level three 
again, it depends on what your qualifications are. So if you've got, if let's say you've got three A-levels and they're good grades, but you've not got them in the subject that you want to do an apprenticeship in, the chances are you'd have to start or be looking for something that starts at a lower level. But they tend to, um, yeah, the, it's a mix. So I know people that have done, again, chartered management with KFC, for example, I know that you go through the whole, you start at level two, it takes okay. five years, um, but you've done, yeah, level two through to um, the degree level. Other options, I think Barclays do one that's pretty much a straight in at a degree level. Um, and yeah, it depends. Yeah. Um, I think something I, I often say to, to our students, I don't know if you um, feel free to add in anything to this, Rob, if you want, but because there are sometimes our students think that because they've done a level three and completed it, they, their automatic next step is to do a degree apprenticeship. And yep. in some sense, it kind of is. And there, there are those opportunities and you can apply for them. Although, as Rob has said, there aren't that many of them, but they do exist. But actually, if you don't look at, at level three, as well you're kind of missing a trick because if you can get into a good company on a level three apprenticeship it may well be the case that you can then progress onto the four and five with that company um and it, it isn't the backward step that it can sometimes feel yeah to look at the level three definitely agree with that even level twos there's nothing <laughs> if you've not done the job before the difference with apprenticeships and degrees um you know even with the apprenticeship degree is that you, if you've not worked before you're learning that job and i know um certainly mattioli woods for example they do um so they're doing a sort of uh, they do a chartered management option but finance related um in leicester and those individuals that start the degree technically you're working your way through um, right through the apprenticeship scheme from two upwards but they're starting in pretty much the same position they're working with people that have done a degree and have started a graduate role with Mattioli yeah. Woods I've met those people they're in the same office they're basically doing the same work mm. and getting the same pay as as those that have done a degree and and they're just learning on the job mm. um, so you know I wouldn't turn down that role based on you know oh i've already got a level so i don't need to cover that ground again the apprenticeship tends to be very much more um practically associated with that job so if you've not done that job before then you don't know how to do that job yeah. they'll teach you how to do that job so it's kind of you know if i decide to change careers you know i, I have a degree not that i use it that much in my job but i have a degree um and if I decided now I want to go into construction, I've never done that. So I'm going to have to start at level two as a bricklayer because I've never done bricklaying before. Um, it doesn't, yeah. So it would depend slightly on what you've done A level wise. And if you've got something that's directly related to that job, but most of the time, um, you know, it, you haven't got the skills at the moment um, to do the job. Yeah. Another so that reminds me of actually one of our students, and this illustrates a couple of points. Um, one of which is 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 what we were just saying, which is don't discard those level three or those lower opportunities as a, as a way in. Um, and and the other point is about looking not just necessarily at those big names, although I know we've said to do that because they do have some amazing opportunities, but also there are particularly in Leicester there are lots of smaller companies, and that that could be companies of up to about two hundred em employees who who have. Um, some fantastic opportunities so we had a, one of our ex, one of our students that applied for a level three apprenticeship with a company called LEBC um, worked through it really quickly did it and then they ended up offering her a degree apprenticeship that they funded her on so if they like you like Rob said um, if they get the right person they don't want to train you up for you to then go and work somewhere else so if you get in somewhere impress them then they're going to want to keep you and kind of um, develop you that way so yeah it was just a bit of an anecdotal thing. Um, okay, so we've had another question. Oh, good question. The students on it. So it's about how you apply for degree apprenticeships particularly. So whether you use UCAS or whether you would apply directly to the company. 
I think you can. I don't know. It's firstly the answer. Um, but I know that those apprenticeships will show up on the find an apprenticeship site. So they'll definitely be on there. I'm not sure, to be honest, if you can apply for that on UCAS as well. Um, oh. but, but go on, Kate. No, carry on, carry on, carry on. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, won't uh, your application on the Find an Apprenticeship service won't affect whatever you've done on your UCAS form. So it doesn't, you know, you can do both. I know that much. Um, I'm yeah. not sure how it works as far as putting it on your UCAS form, mainly because of the time scales. Um, so I suppose if you knew exactly what you were doing at the time and the job was available or the apprenticeship was available at the time of your UCAS application, I'm sure you could put that on there. I don't know for sure, but a lot of the time you don't know that. So you'd put in your UCAS application and then apply for apprenticeships as well. So that's the same whether you're um, yeah, year 11 or year 13. It's it's the same issue you'd have perhaps your course as a backup um but look for apprenticeships on top of that yeah yeah that's right and that's one of the really good things actually because you apply to you um to university through UCAS and apprenticeships more kind of directly to the company then you can apply like Rob says to both which means you can keep your options open which is great really um okay so hopefully we've answered that one so how to apply so um Give you, give you sort of three or four minutes to send in any more um, any more questions you've got while while Rob and I just have a, a bit of a chat about a few other things that I think you guys might be interested in. Um, so please don't miss out on this opportunity. If you have got a question to ask, send it through um, on the Q&A button and we'll, we'll get to it. Um, Rob, I was just wondering, I, you, uh, you might not know this, it's more of a personal opinion really, a bit of crystal ball gazing. Um, but with everything that's happened, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think certain sectors will explode and there'll be loads of opportunity? Do you think it will be a slow kind of increase in opportunities over the next few months? Or do you think a year down the line it will be exactly as it was? I think that the government are probably going to have to make reforms around the apprenticeship options just because things there's various things going on not just with covid that are meaning that apprenticeships aren't as good as they could be and also mainly as as accessible as they could be um so it is hard to say because it's hard to know what they'll do um they'll they'll i think they'll match the economy as a whole so i think those growth industries um, certainly in Leicestershire, there's a huge amount of, log if we look to the jobs that are available now, it's all health and social care and logistics, whether that's warehouse work, whether that's um, driving, um, you know, food production, those type of roles, um, that's what's going on. Um, and I think we'll see an increase in those type of roles. But also um, engineering, like I said, is always strong motor vehicle. Those areas, I think, will continue. Mm. Uh, we're seeing those. But again, it's how it's just so hard to say how I, and I've been talking to different employers within those sectors that, again, they're not sure because they don't know how they're going to be able to deliver the training with um, social distancing or, you know, we don't know how long that's going to go yeah. on. Mm. Um, so that certainly I know this year there's big companies that I've spoken to that are essentially writing off this academic year because they just can't commit to it they don't know what's happening um so yeah it's 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 tricky but I'd say they'll tend to be um more opportunities in the areas where there's demand for jobs I know that's perhaps an obvious thing to say no, no, it's, it's, the, yeah it's, it's worth so just kind of keep it it's, it's thinking about I mean, I'd always say try and follow career-wise what you're genuinely interested in rather than what you think, um, you know, might make you money or think, yeah, I'm good at this, um, so I'm going to do it. It's really a balance of, yes, you're good at something, but do you enjoy it? And, can you, and also, are there opportunities in it? So it's those kind of three elements to it. Um, but I would just say, yeah, use those resources like Start especially and um, really work out what options, um, which things would do suit you best. Um, 
but yeah also you've got to keep an eye on what opportunities are there and um which things are in demand yeah i think yeah, that's really good advice um so Hamza's has asked a question which um we'll just, we'll just go over again so which is can you apply for an apprenticeship in university at the same time so yes you can at the yeah, time change is different but yes you absolutely can apply to both and actually you don't have to really make your decision about what you want until kind of very last minute because you can leave your uni option there really until August. Um, and, and so you can absolutely keep your options open in that way. That's a, that's a big yes. You can, you can definitely yeah, You can accept a job offer from, for an apprenticeship and then just turn it down. You know, it's again, same with that, that um, yeah, you're not yeah. tied in. So, and we would, we would, as a careers team, advise you to do that unless you're completely anti going to university. We would say apply to both, see what you get, keep your options open, and then make your decisions um, sort of nearer the time. So that's hopefully a, a, a quick, clear answer to that one. Um, this is probably another one of kind of it depends, um, Rob, uh, probably on the company, but you, but you might have some idea. So um, students asking how many people on average would, this, would a company take on for their apprenticeships? And so how, how can Yeah, it just completely depends on that company. So people like the NHS take on hundreds. Um, obviously, they're a huge employer. The larger companies tend to take on more. Some companies are taking on apprentice for the first time. So you'll literally be the only apprentice. Mm. Um, there are things as well that maybe you can ask in during that application process um, that if you're more comfortable with a cohort of apprentices, which is why I tend to favor those larger companies. If um, you know, that will suit you more if you don't want to be on your own, but it's kind of, Ultimately, it's the world of work. So you'll be working or for the first time really in your life, you're put with people from all kinds of different backgrounds and ages, you know, in a, in a company that you can't really choose. So yeah, it's whether, how comfortable you feel about that. Do you need a cohort of people of a similar age doing a similar thing at the same time? Or are you confident to do it on your own? Yeah, and I think, yeah, that's great. A, a lot of it is, it, it does kind of depend, doesn't it, as uh, we were saying. Um, okay, so that's all the questions that have come through for the moment. Um, I, I've, I've got two more, so I'm going to ask you those, Rob, and then um, if any other questions come through, we'll answer them. But if not, we'll we'll um, let you get on with your recruitment for the okay. what you're telling me about. Um what would your top tips be for someone that's applying for an apprenticeship? Um, you know, or, or what sort of advice would you give them on what to think about? So I know I keep going on about it with careers, but I would do as much research as you can into careers. I'd be using the so many good resources online, particularly start. You can look at the national careers service site. There's so much information there to help you make the right decision um and work out what it is that you want to do that's kind of the hardest part of it also you've got a careers um, tutor there as well that you should access if you've got if you know if you can see connections your careers tutor whoever it is the more interaction you can have with those people the more time you can spend working out exactly what you want to do or as best you can the better it's really hard i think very few people know for sure what they want to do they think, oh, I might want to do this because I've heard, I don't know, a family member's doing it, so it sounds good. But a lot of the time people get into careers and then they realize, actually, I don't really like this. <laughs> um, so again, we mentioned before with experience or volunteering, always good to do something like that, to just try it. I know of tons of people that think, um, say they want to be a teacher, but then when they actually go and do a bit of volunteering and get in a classroom with kids, they quickly realize, actually, I don't want to do that. But it's taken that experience for them to rule that option out. Yeah. So again, the more different experiences you can have, just try things out and see if you like them, um, the better, because the more um, likely you are then to make a good decision. So the the tools on start that are particularly useful are the profile that you can build up so you can answer a ton of questions 
and it will tell you how matched you are to particular careers. And again, that's really useful. I know of people that have said, definitely want to do this. And then when they do that matching process, it comes up as you're definitely not suited to that role. And it tells you why you're not suited to it as well. Or just as much, it could say, yes, you are. And this is why you are suited. And then you know. But I just think, again, especially at a time like this, when you've got time, do that research really do your best to try and work out is this definitely the right thing for me and then follow that again things like start tell you the routes and national career service does it as well they tell you the routes into those careers so follow those routes often there's multiple options so you don't have to do an apprenticeship you could do a degree you could do an hnd whatever it is just follow follow those routes and i know it might sound obvious but pick the things pick the route that thinks that you think would most suit you um, but i definitely say don't do an apprenticeship for the sake of doing an apprenticeship or don't think about one for the sake you know because you won't be successful um, you need to pick an area that you're interested in first of all you need to be able to demonstrate to that company and training provider that you're really passionate about this and you're keen on it and then you're going to be working 30 to 40 hours a week in that role if it's not something that you're interested in that much you're not going to enjoy it you know it's, it's probably well we know it's it's at least double the time you'd spend in college lectures for example if you went to college instead you might do 15 16 hours a week you're going to be doing 30 to 40 so you need to make sure it's something that you're genuinely interested in yeah thank so, you yeah, that, that's really good advice um, the, uh, the question has just popped in uh, about accounting and finance apprenticeship so would you be able to just go through kind of the main opportunities that there might be so what levels they might be and that that kind of thing for accounting and finance yeah, they're starting at level two. Again, depending on the qualifications that you got, back to the sort of conversation we had earlier, that if you've not done accounting before, even if you've got a Mass A level, um, you're going to start at level two and work your way through there. Typically, companies will train you through, um, like we mentioned before as well. So a good option for that locally, there's a place called Kaplan, um, and they're a national provider, but they specialize in apprenticeships in the finance sector. I've also got contacts with a few of the local providers that offer those apprenticeships. So I'd definitely say get in touch with us if you're interested in, in finance. There, there are several options available, but I'm happy to talk through those um, Yeah, after this. Okay, thanks Rob. And um, a student's asked a question, we've, we've talked a bit about work experience and how important that is and how that can kind of strengthen an application, um, but a student's asking how or how would you recommend getting that at the moment or is there any way, way around that kind of traditional work experience um, sort of route now with the current sort of issues that we're having? Yeah, it's tricky now, but I would definitely be, again, approach, approach employers. Um, I think LEBC might offer um, a work experience service because they have links with employers. So again, I don't know if you have a link to them. Or yeah, the, yeah, there's some virtual stuff we've sent out. So in my updates, I've been sending out every week. Some of that thing, um, has had some links to some virtual um, work experiences that have been happening um, with, with places like Santander, KPMG. There's been quite a few. So um, if you haven't had that, let me know and I'll make sure you get you get but uh, get that yeah but definitely approach employers i know of someone that was helping um probably started helping them with careers advice or helping them into work about a year ago and he wanted to get into architecture and he i said you know contact some local firms and see what you can do um you know see what they say he contacted someone he's now about to start a apprenticeship degree with them wow. and that's just from contacting a company saying can i come and do some voluntary work with you they got on he did that voluntary work and then they he said to them which is what i advised him to do is <laughs> give him i gave him the details of the unis that offer this and said tell your company you know if they get in touch with these universities they can get free training for you um, for businesses the apprenticeships are free um, but they offer you as well you don't pay for them so um, yeah just from 
offering to volunteer at a firm, you know, he's now going to be starting this degree apprenticeship. So it's it's worth asking. Wow, it really is, isn't it? Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And I suppose the other thing people could do, it's all about showing transferable skills, isn't it? So, you know, if there's any options for students to volunteer in their community or get involved with helping people, neighbours out, you know, that kind of thing would show, wouldn't it, that they, Definitely. That they did during the, the, the pandemic and how they demonstrated those skills. Yeah, em employers want people with good communication skills that are organised and that are reliable. There's not much beyond that. You know, there's things like attention to detail that are important. You can demonstrate attention to detail, certainly academically with your grades. Um, but the key things are, yeah, being able to communicate, being organized, being reliable. You can demonstrate that all to an employer um, just by volunteering with them and you'll stand out because that gets noticed if someone arrives on time it gets noticed if they you know um yeah communicate well and listen and you know follow through and organize their work it gets noticed um so yeah absolutely that's great okay so that looks like that's all the questions so rob i just wanted to ask one more thing um you it's you've mentioned quite a bit about the, the support that your organization can give which is great so how would mm. students get in in contact with you or find i don't mean your email address i know we've said that i can share that no, but it's fine, yeah the, they can contact through the website as well so all the information is on lesteremploymenthub.co.uk yeah um so there's a job seekers page on that and you'll see that linked from the front page of the website there's a ton of information on there including things like start that i've mentioned before and um links to apprenticeship vacancies um yeah there's a lot of info on there there's also con you know contact form on there so get in touch yeah. thanks ever such a lot we really appreciate your time today thank you very much because i know you've had a lot on so um we do really appreciate that and just to say to students again if you want to talk about your own specific circumstances um please just let us know by emailing careers um and also uh Mohammed, I've seen your, your question come in. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that afterwards. I'll email you. Um, oh, actually, Rob, would you mind just asking one more question? That's fine, yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Um, could, you, could you give any insight into software engineering or computing apprenticeships and what kind of opportunities there might be there? Yeah, there are some um, software engineering. Definitely see them through, um, see them coming through in the job lists. Um, again, search on that Find an Apprenticeship Service. Have a look there. Have a look on START and or the National Careers Service for Software Engineer as a role, and you'll see on there which um, um, opportunities are available. And yeah, as ever, feel free to contact after because um, we can talk you through a bit more detail about some of those. Okay, great. Students just asking if this um, if this has been recorded and whether they can watch it back and it has been and um, you can. So we'll be sending the link out uh, so you can have another watch of it. So, right, Rob, we better go before anyone asks any more questions. Um, but thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. And You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Guys, thank you for coming and asking your questions as well. So um, that's it. Thanks a lot. Cheers and see you soon. Thanks, Brilliant. Rob. Thanks, Kate. See you. Bye. Bye.